Hello. Good afternoon. Am I speaking with Mr. Baxter? This is he. This is Jean-Vierre Vanderbilt. I require your professional help in a delicate matter. It's about a murder investigation. I'd rather not talk about it on the phone, though, so please come to our estate at 361 Prime Avenue. Hello. Welcome to Dabbles Gaming. I'm Sean Connery. Got the martini, shaken, not stirred, and a cigarette. Join me for a playthrough of Dirty Split. No, I'm just kidding, guys. It's me. Uh, I'm Dabbles. My name's Dabbles, because that's what I do. Today we're playing Dirty Split. It's this great little adventure game you can pick up at freebundle.com. It's made from the guys over at Dream Animation. Or I think it's how it's pronounced. Uh, dot com. So, effectively, as you saw with the intro, uh, you are Baxter, this little guy right here. In a gorgeous 60s style suit. I mean, look at this, look at this art style. The art style is absolutely beautiful. Uh, the music is amazing. And you are a private investigator of some sort, detective. And your job is to uh, figure out what Miss Vanderbilt wants. So, we've got... Prime Avenue, 361. This must be the Vanderbilt estate. Yes, it is, Baxter. Let's see what kind of car they got. Seems nice. Standard point and click adventure game. A $150,000 sports car. Very nice. Very nice indeed. All right, so there is a voice acting, so I won't have to make up voices. So, let's uh, let's go inside. See Miss Vanderbilt. A massive door made of rare wood. Oops. I'm gonna use the door. I better use the doorbell instead of knocking. Oh, oh, of course. Of course. Of course. Yes. My name is Baxter. I'd like to talk to Mrs. Vanderbilt. Mrs. Vanderbilt is in the garden. I'll take you to her. Oh, look at this place. Let's see if we can we can walk around. What is what the hell is that? It looks like a Rorschach ink blot. Yeah, it does look like a Rorschach ink blot. Oh, who's this? Is this is this Miss Vanderbilt? I should talk to Mrs. Vanderbilt before I bother her. Oh no! But look at that! Look at that cityscape. Oh, look! It's it's L.A. You have a wonderful view of downtown Los Angeles from up here. Oh yes, yes indeed. All right, so I guess this is Miss Vanderbilt. Now, uh, I have played through this a little bit just to see if it worked. But I, I didn't do anything. Good afternoon, Mrs. Vanderbilt. Good afternoon, Mr. Baxter. Thank you for coming on such short notice. Of course. I'd like to get straight to the point, if that's all right with you. Very much so. The sooner this unspeakable matter is resolved, the better. You said on the phone this was about a murder investigation. Exactly right. My son is being accused of murder. Oh, no. My son, Walter. Walter Vanderbilt. What insufferable impudence. Uh, why have you contacted my why agency? Why have you contacted my agency? First of all, I'm highly disappointed by the police effort. If you can call such a measure of incompetence and indifference, effort. So the police are satisfied with their main suspect? That's right. I'll need to have a word with the chief of police. Fortunately, Brent is an old golf partner of my late husband, God bless him. Ah, uh, yes. Furthermore, your agency was recommended to me by a dear friend, Martha Stockman. Ah, uh, I remember. The Stockman case. How is Mrs. Stockman these days? It's Miss Meadows again. After the results of your investigation, she divorced her husband, of course. Sad story, really. Indeed. Ooh. Well, that's tricky. Let's ask about the murder. About the murder circumstances. That was quick. <laughs> Uh, oh, here we go. Who was the victim? Who was the victim? Dr. Bedford. Christopher Bedford. Bedford is... Bedford was my daughter Denise's fiancé. This whole matter is a tragedy for our family. First, the shameful way in which Bedford cancelled the wedding, and now this. Okay, so we have a cancelled wedding. I'm guessing that the lovely lady to the left is this uh, daughter. And uh, the her brother is being accused of his murder.
Where and when did the murder happen? The police said Bedford was found dead in his practice yesterday morning. The murder must have happened the night before. Who found the doctor? His receptionist found him in the morning, they told me. A somewhat dim-witted little thing. No sense whatsoever of aesthetics and colors. Oh, well, she should be easy to spot, I guess. What exactly happened? I didn't ask about the ghastly details, Mr. Baxter. I was only told that Bedford had been slain. Slain? Beaten to death. Horrid, really. Ooh. And the police have the audacity to accuse my Walter of being able to do something like this to another person. Well, we're gonna have to, uh, meet this Walter guy. I think I've heard enough about the murder. Okay. Oh, we got more options now. Here we go. You sound like you're convinced of your son's innocence. A thousand percent. It is incomprehensible to me how anyone could ever accuse my Walter of murder. He is a highly respected member of the community and has never done anything wrong. Never? This is all an outrageous effrontery. Effrontery. Oh, wow. That's the easy, easy question. Let's go by the book. Has Walter gotten violent before? What are you hinting at when you say before, Mr. Baxter? Walter is not a violent person, let alone a murderer. Just to hear that word in connection with my son, absurd. Okay, so Walter's not, not, okay. There we go, where was Walter? Where was Walter at the time of the murder? I don't know. You should ask him about that in person. Hmm, well, where is Walter? Let's see here. There we go. How well did they know each How other? How well did Walter and Dr. Bedford know each other? Well, they hardly knew each other at all. I always had the impression that Bedford stayed away from the rest of our family on purpose. It, it was almost as if he wanted to steal our Denise away from us. But surely he couldn't avoid you all that time he was with your daughter. Of course not. But I always had the feeling that Bedford avoided the public eye. Just as if that man had something to hide. Ooh, guy's got some skeletons in his closet. Has Walter go. exhibited any strange behavior lately? No. Walter's behavior was downright normal. Nothing extraordinary. He even made the best out of the given circumstances. What circumstances? Well, a week ago, Bedford dissolved the engagement with my daughter. And this after the both of them had planned the wedding for half a year. The shame of it. What was his reason for canceling the wedding? Well, he never gave a reason. As if there could be any reason for such a disgrace. My poor Denise was devastated and heartbroken. And now this. Hmm. And Walter's reaction, there we go. What was Walter's reaction to the wedding cancellation? Well, he was furious, of course. What an outrage. My Denise abandoned his sister. The family honor trampled underfoot, and all that in front of the entire family. The disgrace. Walter was forced to raise his voice and reprimand the doctor for his impudence. Did Walter threaten the doctor? Mr. Baxter, you must understand. This impertinence, this effrontery in front of the whole family. The ungrateful Bedford reduced us to the laughing stock of the community. He soiled Denise's name as well as the family honor. I see. If Walter threatened anybody, then it was only in the heat of the moment. Thoroughly understandable, I think. What was the content of these threats? Nothing really menacing, and I don't intend to repeat it either. How fast a thoughtless word can slip from a heated mind, and Walter had every right. Ooh. There we go. What, 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 what did Walter say? What has Walter told you about the incident? Well, the truth, of course. He said he didn't have anything to do with the murder, and he was even more surprised than I that he's being accused. Unfortunately, I didn't have any further opportunity to speak to him. The police refused to let me talk to him. Unbelievable. Ah, so I guess he's in custody. We'll have to go to the uh, police station to talk to Walter. Well, enough about Walter. Yeah, enough about Walter. How about Dr. Bedford? Please, tell me about Dr. Bedford. Hmm. I shouldn't say doctor. Ooh. Well, what kind of doctor? What kind of doctor was Dr. Bedford? He was a plastic surgeon with his own practice. Of course. 
Sounds like he was very successful. Moderately successful, I'd say. But I have to hand it to the man. He had a talent for plastic surgery. But he wasted his gift entirely and only accepted patients from Los Angeles. Exclusively from around here? Exactly. He could have had international success with just a little bit of promotion. If he didn't engage in any promotion, then how did he get any patients? That, Mr. Baxter, is a very good question. He saw and selected his patients only in person. How successful he could have been. I've never understood what my Denise found so fascinating about a man who sells himself under value. Looks like a decent guy. Hmm, so let's see, we got a, a murdered plastic surgeon. The accused is the son of a wealthy family whose sister was dumped by this dude. Oh, here's a, here's a by the book question. Do you know if the doctor had any enemies? The sad and embarrassing truth is that I hardly know anything about Bedford, Mr. Baxter. I don't know anything about his friends and acquaintances. Unfortunately, I've never had a chance to meet his family either. Bedford had been an orphan since early childhood. Oh, an orphan? Wow, this guy sounds like a really good guy. I notice that you keep referring to the doctor as Bedford. Please excuse my asking so bluntly, but I'm getting the feeling that you don't think very highly of the doctor. I don't want to talk badly about Bedford, especially now that he's not alive anymore. But I admit you were right. What did you have against Dr. Bedford? The man is, was, always a bit fishy, very close-lipped and withdrawn. His constant excuses to stay away from official family business shed a bad light on our name. I honestly don't know what Denise saw in such a man. Oh, I do. His pocketbook. Enough about Dr. Bedford. All right, well, out of conversation options. I'll be going then. Please inform me of your progress, Mr. Baxter. And money is no object here. The only important thing is that you prove Walter's innocence. Okay, now, we have a little uh, inventory here. We got our gun. A little classic PP7 style. We have a pencil and a notebook. So let's see if we can't... Jot... Oh. I don't have to jot anything down right now. Oh. I'm not so senile I have to write down everything. Oh, well, 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 sorry. Let's get rid of that then. Well, let's go talk to Denise. Miss, Miss Denise. Good afternoon, Miss Vanderbilt. Hello, Mr. Um, Mr. Excuse me. My name is Baxter. She's not the brightest bulb in the box, is she? Your mother hired me to clear up the circumstances of Dr. Bedford's death. Chris? Oh my god, Chris. Okay. Let's talk about, about Chris. Dr. Bedford. There we go, she might know. If he had any enemies. Did Dr. Bedford have any enemies? I don't know. No, I don't think so. The voice actor for this chick sounds like she's 12. Uh, no offense to the guys who made this, but she sounds really young. Vanderbilt sounded sounded appropriately aged. There we go, Dr. Bedford's activity. Had there activity. been anything unusual about Dr. Bedford's behavior lately? Yes. Yes, Chris had been acting strange all week. He wasn't himself. Not the man I knew. The engagement... We, we were engaged, and he called it off. Chris, Chris let me down, but my Chris would never have done such a thing. I don't understand. What was the reason he gave for the separation? Reason? He, he said it would be better for me. He didn't say anything else. No reason, and, and, and no hint. Nothing at all. I still don't understand all this. Wally was so furious. Wally? So furious. Who the hell's Wally? And now Wally Oh, Walter. Is... Oh, God. Wow. 
Please, calm down, Miss Vanderbilt. If your brother is innocent, I will find out and free him. If Walter is innocent, but there's out. no question about it. It's self-evident. We are talking about my son, Walter, a Vanderbilt. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Baxter. Always stayed long in his office. Eh. Enough about Dr. Baxter. I don't think we'll learn anything else new from this. Let's ask about Walter. A few questions about Walter. Here we go. Can you imagine Motive. any reason why your brother would murder Dr. Bedford? Wally didn't take it too well that Chris announced our separation so surprisingly. And in front of the whole family. Everyone was so surprised. I... I still can't believe it myself. Everything went so fast. Wally became enraged. He cursed Chris, and... and... And threatened him too? Yes, but he didn't kill him. No, surely not. Not Wally. Okay, so it sounds like this Dr. Bedford's got some, uh, skeletons in his closet. Uh, here we go. Do you know where Walter was at the time of the murder? No, I don't know. Hmm, okay, well enough, enough about that. About she doesn't Walter. know anything. Uh, how, how are, are you? you? I, I can't believe all this. Chris... Chris is... dead. <laughs> oh, God. My dear Chris. And Wally's in custody. This is all a nightmare. Right, well, thank you very much for your time. I don't want to disturb you any longer. I disturb. Yes, I. Yes. Goodbye. Wow, she's all out of sorts. Look, a box of box of hankies. Looks like the box is almost used up. Aw, poor lady. All right, well, let's see. Miss Vanderbilt knows anything else. Good afternoon, Mrs. Vanderbilt. Good afternoon, Mr. Baxter. Ah, she doesn't know anything else. I'll okay. be going then. Please and money. La la, money, money. Who? What's this? The caption says Saint Tropez and Sunset Glow. Looks more like a steaming turnip to me. I don't know. I kind of think like it looks like uh, an artistic liar. Ah, as in the instrument, not the person. Okay, well, I guess uh, we can't do much more here. Let's go visit Dr. Bedford's. Hmm. You know what? I'll leave that first as the first video here. And uh, next time, we'll go, we'll go talk to Wally in the police precinct. How's that sound, guys? All right, so as always, if you've enjoyed this, just the first little sneak peek, I will be playing more of this. Uh, always rate, favorite, share this with your friends. Hell, share it with your enemies. And uh, I've been Dabbles. You guys have been awesome.